My name is Lynn Angeli. I'm the daughter of Chuck and Bessie Canestra, the granddaughter of Conchetta and John Dovey. Um, and I'm here to talk about um, our traditional picnics that started in the 40s. Um, every Sunday, our family and many other families, not necessarily related, but very close friends of the family, um, would get together on Sundays and um, have a picnic at Sheridan Park in Cudahy. Hi, my name is Paula Malio Weigland. I am here today uh, to talk to you about a family history of picnics for many, many generations. Um, very fond memories. Uh, this is something that we did with many families, uh, including mine. And my grandparents were Louis and Francis Fopi and Tony and Evelyn Malio. My mother and father were Sal and Mary Grace Malio. So uh, we, along with a number of families, went to Sheridan Park on the south side from Father's Day until Labor Day and had picnics where, these, where all these families picnicked together from around noon lunchtime to uh, early evening where we also had dinner. Uh, this is just, again, something that is probably irreplaceable. I don't know if this would ever happen again in, in our lifetime, but uh, has very fond memories and families and friends that were very, very close through these years. They were always making pasta and green bean, Italian green beans and just salad preparations, bringing the tomatoes, the lettuce, the cucumbers, the dressings, uh, vinegar and oil only, of course. Um, but I remember when they would make the pasta, putting it, having it, after it was all prepared, putting it in a big kettle or vigila that my grandma would call, recall, and wrapping it in a newspaper and then dish towels and tying it in a knot. And before you knew it, you had this big old kettle wrapped in this dish towel just to keep it warm. Um, but that was one of our main dishes for lunch was pasta. Lunch wasn't the only meal. We also had dinner at the park um, and that everybody usually brought their own, but there was always more than enough for everyone to share, which was Italian sausage and uh, bean salad and pasta salad and potato salad and of course, shortino rolls. And after dinner, there was always desserts, but we always had watermelon. It was probably the biggest watermelon any store could, could have. Um, but my dad always did the cutting um, he sliced that watermelon so that there was enough for everyone at the park. I mean, everyone in our group. So the first slice of the watermelon went to the wife of the president. That was kind of a traditional thing. He would cut it right off the top. You know, the sweetest part of the watermelon that always went to Rose Bartoloni. My dad brought it to her all the time. Um, but everyone got a plate of watermelon to put at their table. And that was tradition. The regular picnic route, Sunday picnic routine was pack up the staples the night before, um, Sunday morning, go to church early in the morning, um, come home. My mom would always boil hard boiled, make hard boiled eggs so that we had a little snack to have before everyone would start their lunch. When we got to the picnics, um, usually the men helped carry everything out of the cars um, and everybody had their own uh, had a, their own picnic table but we'd pull all the tables together so we'd be in one big group um, once that was all taken care of the men would take off and go play bocce's and the woman the women would just get the lunch prepared and then when everything was on the table ready for everyone to eat then the men would find their way back to the table and sit down and have lunch. After lunch, the women did the dishes. Obviously, we used no paper plates or cups uh, and plastic silver was never heard of. We all had um, our own dishes, but the ladies would carry these big aluminum or, or vigilas with 
with handles on them. Carry it to the ladies' bathroom um, and then walk out together hand in hand carrying big, at least two gallon kettles full of hot water and rinse water, soapy water and rinse water. Um, and the women would do the dishes and of course the men would just go back and play watchies. What I remember most about these picnics was just the camaraderie of the men and the women. Uh, the women, after we had our lunch, the women washed the dishes in tubs with uh, dish soap and had an assembly line of the way they did things. And then most of the afternoon just sat around eating sweets and talking and reminiscing of their days in their childhood and how they all came over and I enjoyed listening to these ladies I really did I, I I've always cherished the listening to the Italian women and the traditions in their lifetime and how these families were all brought together because most of them were not related they were all just very dear friends also the men the bocis uh, that to this day we have a bocce set and we play bocis with our children and family and I enjoyed watching the men they were so serious they had their cigars they'd stop for a potty break they'd stop for their can of beer back in the day Schlitz and Paps that's about all they had and uh, just just the it, pure enjoyment it seemed like there wasn't a worry in the world again I was younger at the time but it was just happy times that's all I can say happy times with food family laughter and beyond These families were so close uh, that the babies being born to all of them were actually baptized and were the, the parents, were the godparents to these babies. They were kumaris and, pa, uh, kumaris and purinos and purinas and therefore it was like uh, as close as family would be. So they really did um, cherish one another's friendships. That's how close they all were. And actually, speaking of friendships, uh, my husband, Dean Weikland, uh, has been a part of these picnics as well. We were good friends back in the day when this was probably halfway through uh, in the uh, early 70s. And Dean has actually participated and seen some of this in action. I don't know if uh, he yeah. can contribute to this uh, as well. Sure. Uh, I mean, the first few times that I come and play poaches I thought it was going to be more of a relaxing event and didn't realize how competitive they were taking tape measures out of their pockets and measuring by a quarter of an inch and eighth of an inch and, and if you didn't throw the ball very good the first few times I might have been a little bit short and it was like gee go eat a sandwich or something and you <laughs> so they were uh, they were very competitive um, and I think Paula's most fondest memory was bringing me to the picnic, <laughs> if I recall right. So I'd like to <laughs> clarify that also. The Labor Day picnic was extra special and it was even longer. We would start early in the morning. Um, I'm sure we were there by at least by eight o'clock in the morning. Um, grill would be started, getting started and the scrambled eggs would begin, the pancakes would start, the bacon would be sizzling, and of course, perked coffee on the grill. The last picnic of the season, that was on Labor Day Monday, uh, the families would gather in the morning and we would actually cook breakfast on the grills. We'd have bacon and eggs and sausage and pancakes, and we'd start with breakfast and the day carried on like normal, then we'd have our lunch, our baked pasta, and trinkies, the trinkasheda, and, and the uh, salads, and, and so on, and desserts. We also would uh, have, later in the day, sausage. We'd have sazitsa from, uh, what, uh, excuse me, I can't even think of the name of the, the sausage, dentisi sausage. That is where the sausage came from, and uh, we had sausage sandwiches and ended with a big, huge watermelon. The president's wife always made um, a special birthday cake for her husband, uh, the president, and um, everyone would sing happy birthday. And I remember um, Mr. Bartoloni, we called him Tutti, 
he would get very emotional after everybody saying happy birthday to him. And at the end of the evening, when we were all packing up to leave for the season, uh, Tutti Bartoloni, Sam Bartoloni, the uh, president of the picnics, uh, would bless the grounds and all of us uh, to return the following year as we did for, as you can see, and as you now know, for 30 plus years. So Sheridan Park family picnics is uh, historical and something I'll never forget. I think this was quoted by Donna Bartoloni. They picked, we picnicked regardless of the weather. If it rained, we all ran to our cars and waited. If it was cold, we coped. Um, but she says, I can still remember the women wearing shawls, sanding around the fires to try to keep warm. The men were playing bocce and the kids would just be freezing. <laughs>